Hi, I'm Joe, and today we're going to take a deep dive into how I work with monitors within the LV1 system. This will be a three-part series, and in this first one I will focus on how to mix monitors from front of house. So, let's go. So, first of all, some housekeeping. Uh, what we will listen to is uh, a recent tour I did with uh, a band called Stone Mountain Orchestra. Uh, I did front of house and I had my monitor engineer, Sebastian, doing uh, monitors for the band. Uh, so uh, we, we will use the, the audio from that tour. Uh, Stone Mountain Orchestra is a 14 piece band. So uh, we actually have 14 uh, or actually 15 uh, mixes going up on, on the stage. To make things a bit more manageable, I focused on uh, the the drums, bass, guitar keys, and vocal mo monitors. So those are the things we're going to listen to. So let's start off with the most simple way and the way that most probably will do uh, monitors from the front of house console. In this setup, I have uh, all channels on two layers. So uh, layer one is. Uh, Drums, percussion, bass, guitar, and keyboards on layer two. We have some more keyboards and percussion, uh, horns, vocals. We also have a few effects. The yellow ones are meant for the monitors up on stage and the green one ones for the front of house mix. So in this case, you have all of the channels going to the, to the PA uh, and you obviously want to be able to to adjust all of this without adjusting the, the the monitor system up on the stage. So you would need to send all of this pre-fader, meaning uh, if I turn all the drums down in the in the PA, nothing happens up on the stage. So uh, to set all of this up, let's go to the uh, monitor layer. So for all of your auxes, you want to make sure that uh, you're sending everything pre-fader, so uh, go to change all sources, pre-fader, and make sure you do this on uh, all of the auxes that you're sending up to the stage. Also, I like to set up user keys so that I quickly can uh, flip the, the faders and go into uh, to monitor control. To do this, we go to setup. Uh, UI settings and here you will set the user key to be uh, aux flip on mixer one and then just uh, choose the, the aux you want for each uh, key. So in this case we use uh, drums, bass, guitars, keys and vocals. Also while here make sure that you select the aux cue on flip. This will automatically send the selected mix to your headphones. And that is the setup for the most basic uh, uh, monitor mix from front of house. So when you get to sound check and the drummer asks for more uh, kick in his uh, in ear or wedge, you just uh, select the drum aux and uh, give the drummer whatever they need. Uh, they might need some bass. They might actually need some uh, some vocals. Uh, who knows? The guitarist asks for guitar, you flip to the guitar uh, aux and send to the guitarist whatever they want. And to exit back out, uh, you can just uh, press the guitar button again and you are back out mixing the front of house sound. And to make things easier to know if your faders are, are displaying the front of house sound, sound or the monitor sound uh, as soon as you uh, go in into send, send on fader mode you'll see that uh, it says send level on all the faders indicating that uh, this is uh, sending to an aux uh, rather than uh, sending to the PA. So let's take things to the next level and this is kind of how I usually work with, with monitors when mixing from front of house. So to start off we have exactly the same, we have all of our channels on, on two layers. Uh, but then I duplicate all the inputs, so uh, 
channel 33 up to 64 uh, are used only for monitors on stage. And as you can see, if we go back to uh, layer one, here we have uh, uh, kick, uh, two kick mics, two snare mics, hi-hat toms and so on, going to 33. We have the exact same thing, only these are marked yellow, <laughs> so that I know that uh, everything that is yellow uh, is referring to monitors, not front of house. So the benefit of working like this is that the monitor mix is totally separated from the PA mix. Uh, so whatever I do EQ wise, level wise, whatever in the front of house, uh, it's never affected up on the monitors. So let's look into how I will set all this up. Well, the first thing is that now we will send uh, all of this uh, post fader instead of pre fader as in the last example. So on all the auxes, let's go in and change all of these to post fader. And since all of this is post fader, uh, when the guitarist uh, turns on all of his pedals and rips that guitar solo, I can just with one fader turn the guitar down in all of the in-ears. And that of course goes for all of the channels. If the drummer have uh, had too much coffee, I can just bring down the snare drum in all of the mixes all at once. Uh, I still, of course, uh, am able to go into the bass aux and set the, the, the levels for every channel in the bass player's in-ears. Uh, but uh, sending post fader uh, makes it easy to do kind of global adjustments for everyone. The downside of duplicating all the channels is, well, you're actually duplicating all the work. Now you have two places to set the EQ compression and all the rest of it. So it's way more flexible, but it takes a bit more time to, to, to get things started. So if you just uh, want to kind of quick and dirty get things started, uh, the first way uh, might be quicker. This is absolutely way more flexible. So that's kind of the basics, but let's dive a bit deeper. As you might know, uh, the LV1 mixer has kind of two mixers in one. Uh, mixer one and mixer two. And we can use this to, to our ad advantage in this case. Uh, so what I do is, let's flip to the custom layers. Over here I have set up layer one, two and three uh, to be everything front of house, everything that's going through the PA. And uh, five through eight is everything monitors. And I've duplicated all of this so uh, mixer one and let's put this into custom layer as well. So mixer one and mixer two are identical when it comes to the custom layers. So since I have this Waves Fit controller, I've set this up to uh, reflect everything that's on the mixer two. Uh, and the screen will be set uh, mainly to mixer one. And this lets me work with, uh, let's say, the guitar uh, mix uh, and at the same time have full control of the, the PA mix on the physical faders. My main setup for, for this band is uh, kind of the uh, drums and, and uh, bass on layer one and all the rest of it on layer two. Uh, so uh, I can quickly flip be between these uh, and at the same time uh, have full control over the, the in-air mixes uh, on the screen. And this will obviously work the same way even if you don't have the fit controller, if you have uh, an extra screen you can set up so the lower screen will be uh, mixer 2 and uh, the, the, the main screen will be uh, mixer 1. So let's take things even further. As I told you before, working with duplicating channels it's easy to uh, bring down the guitar player in uh, all of the of the in ears, uh, but if you do that, you actually will have a really angry guitar player. So what I do in order not to make enemies is to send the guitar 
post fader to everyone except the guitar player. The guitar player will have the guitar sent pre fader. So whatever I do on the kind of uh, master level, it will not affect the gu guitar player. Uh, so let's have a look at the guitar. Let's go into the channel and here we can see that it's it sent uh, post fader to everyone but the guitar player. Uh, having a look at the keyboards, same thing, post fader except for the uh, keyboards. Uh, and where it's a uh, pre-fader. Uh, drums, same thing. So this also makes it super easy to help everyone out. As in this case, the guitar player Eric actually knows how to play. So his guitar solo, you might even want to uh, raise up in uh, every, everyone's uh, in ears. So let's have a listen and I will show you how all of this works. Uh, the faders on the physical console, uh, these are kind of the, the master faders for, for each channel. Uh, on the screen you will see each aux sand for the different players. So uh, let's go. Drowning in a stupid So yeah, hopefully that gives you an idea of uh, how all of this works. Another benefit of having everyone's own uh, instrument pre-fader is that I can put up a DCA and uh, in, in this case this DCA controls the volume for all of the monitor faders. So after sound check I can just turn this down uh, and this will turn, da turn down everything but everyone's own instrument. So the guitar player still has his uh, guitar in his ear, same for keyboards and everyone else. So let's just have a quick listen. So this makes it super easy for uh, everyone to kind of stick around and fine tune things if, if needed uh, without disturbing everyone else. So hopefully this gave some insights to how I work with monitors when mixing monitors from, from the house. And in the next video I will show how to set things up when you're just mixing monitors. Links to that video is in the description. If you have any questions, let me know. Take care.